Hello, let's talk about Haskell. Haskell is a programming language that will be used throughout software specification and testing course and this is a very brief introduction to it and some history to give you a uh, context. Haskell Brooks Curry gives the name to the language. He was a famous computer science professor who was doing stuff with mathematical logic and programming languages. The functional programming paradigm as such is really old. Sometimes it's attributed to the 50s, sometimes to the 20s. If you talk about the 50s, this is of course John McCarthy, a computer science professor who came up with a language called Lisp, the first one of the first uh, functional programming languages, which is still kind of used today, and uh, there are quite a lot of uh, useful variants which are modern programming languages. Uh, if you talk about the 20s, this is Mozos uh, Scheinfinkel, who was a student of David Hilbert, uh, uh, one of the greatest mathematicians of that era. And uh, Scheinfinkel came up with combinatorial logic, and he gave uh, a presentation and started working on the topic. Unfortunately, after a couple of years, he lost his mind, literally, and he, will, he ended up in a madhouse, and uh, it didn't go that well for him, but there were some other people who continued that line of research. One of them is Alonzo Church. He proved quite a lot of uh, stuff around that. Um, in Closer to the 80s and to our time, uh, in 1977, John Beckus, who was responsible for a language called Fortran, pretty much the opposite of Haskell, uh, he was invited to give a talk about uh, that when he received Alan Turing Prize. But he said, well, you know what, uh, forget about Fortran, let's talk about this new thing that I'm doing, and that's uh, FP, uh, that was the language he came up with. Nobody cares that much about that language, but his, uh, uh, his idea is that uh, von Neumann um, uh, infrastructure, for von Neumann architecture for uh, computers with uh, you know, memory and memory processing and that view on algorithms is not the only one and perhaps also not the best paradigm to uh, to have when you're thinking about uh, computations. So uh, his uh, presentation definitely uh, uh, attracted some uh, new minds to functional uh, programming. Uh, in the 80s and 90s people um, formed a committee to, uh, form a, to uh, develop a new language which would be functional but also based on accepted ideas, something that has already been proven and is not in active development anymore. Uh, they wanted something that should be suitable for research but also practical uh, and available for free because some of the uh, existing languages at the time were proprietary and that really stopped things from happening. Uh, so, in general, what is functional programming? So, if you think about uh, Fortran-like thinking or uh, imperative thinking, you always have memory and you have some storage and you store values there and you have some pointers to um, pieces, to chunks of your memory and they are usually named and they are called variables and you're doing something with those variables, you specify your algorithm in commands which are executed sequentially. So if you have a factorial program, then you have uh, two locations in your memory. One is called an F, one is called an I, and you initialize uh, F with a uh, with one, and then you uh, have a loop with Y, which goes from one to N, and then you reassign some value to a variable F. So in functional uh, paradigm, you think of functions, you think of data flow, and even if you have variables, this is more like a placeholder with, where you can plug in another function or function call rather and or uh, or a constant or something like this and then it basically forms a specification for your algorithm and in the case of factorial this is just a product of all integers from 1 to n and this is why we are using it uh, because it maps uh, directly to uh, to concepts uh, that arise when we talk about algorithms and about a uh, system on the test. So this is an actual uh, Haskell program. This is the name of a function. Then you have a double colon uh, which is read has type. Then you have an input type, maps to, and an output type. So basically factorial has a type, integer maps to integer. Then you have the same function name because the first line is a type uh, definition and the second is actually a function definition. 
Then you have a variable, which is a, a now a named argument, which you expect, you already know that it will be of type integer. The function is defined as, and it's a function call, so product is one of the functions in the standard library. And then you have arguments to that uh, uh, function, which in this case is a list of uh, something that goes from 1 to n. And this is a complete uh, specification, and it's executable, and you can... Uh, uh, calculate factorials up to very uh, high uh, values. So why are we using Haskell? Again, it's very close to mathematical notation. Uh, we can uh, map directly logical formula uh, to it. Uh, we can use uh, things like lambda calculus and abstract data types. Uh, we can basically use it as executable specification. So it is a specification of your system but it is executable, we can run it, we can test it, we can debug it, we can do model checking, we can do uh, validation, verification, whatnot. Since it is a functional paradigm, usually it yields shorter code, so it makes it, again, easier to read and to argue about. Uh, uh, you have control over side effects, uh, so side effect is what, what happens um, in a function and results in something which is not uh, directly output of the function. Uh, and then you usually work with a kind of abstract algorithm. High order means that you have functions that can take other functions as, as arguments. And Haskell is one of the languages that has a very active uh, community. But there are other functional languages which you either might know or might eventually came across. Pure lambda calculus, it is used for proofs in not that much for uh, programming. XSLT is a mapping language for uh, XML, uh, quite uh, powerful, it's pattern based, so you, uh, uh, you kind of, you match on uh, something and then you have a template that might uh, also uh, trigger some, some other matches. Or camel or an racket, uh, two very uh, close-looking uh, languages. Uh, uh, they are both functional. Um, they look uh, slightly different from uh, from Lisp, uh, closer to Haskell actually, and they are used in many things. So hack is this uh, static typed PHP thingy that Facebook uses. So uh, they use OCaml for uh, the compiler. Coq is an automated theorem improver. Framacy is a framework for software analysis. I don't think you really need to know OCaml unless you are extending Framacy. You can just use Framacy as it is. Uh, then you have Erlang, which is a, a language uh, used quite a lot in uh, uh, web programming and in any kind of uh, transaction-heavy system. So WhatsApp is a typical example of a transaction-heavy uh, system that uses it. GitHub uses it. Uh, CouchDB is a database uh, on top of Erlang. React is a um, MapReduce framework uh, on Erlang. And quite a lot of uh, games use Erlang at least for their uh, chat rooms. So uh, Call of Duty, League of Legends, and, and other big uh, uh, multi, uh, heavily multi-user uh, uh, games do that. Uh, COD also use it for uh, different stuff on the server side. Uh, Scheme and its variant of Ka uh, called Kava is uh, basically a modern Lisp. Um, it's used in App Inventor. It's this uh, Android uh, Google thingy. Uh, code Surfer is again another uh, very powerful uh, source code analysis uh, framework. Proprietary, unfortunately. So if you want to use it for software evolution course or software construction, you need to apply for academic license. Uh, GIMP is a graphic editor. Uh, so if you need uh, to write uh, plugins, you use uh, also Scheme. Uh, Closure is basically the same as Scheme. So it's kind of more than Lisp, but it runs on. JVM and also at CLR and there are variants for uh, for Python for Ruby and whatnot. Uh, basically, it's used uh, by people who need to, for example, stay within Java uh, ecosystem and then they still want to do functional uh, stuff. Then they use Closure. F# -sharp is the same. It looks uh, uh, very much like OCaml, uh, but it is uh, it runs on .NET. So summary of this is uh, functional programming is a paradigm for software engineering which cares about data flow, 
more and less about uh, sequential manipulation of uh, chunks of memory. There are many languages uh, which are functional or use some bits of functional uh, paradigm. We will use Haskell. So the next step for you is go to haskell.org and fetch yourself so-called Haskell uh, platform, which has an interpreter and some, some other useful tools. That's it. Thank you.